Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Football Manager 2016 and this is Season 4 of the AC Milan Save This is a Return to Glory and uh, well, it's September. I decided to do what a lot of other people are doing now and that's sort of not play the first game of the season because, well, one, the transfer window but two, uh, just to give you a little bit of context to uh, how we're doing in the season it's no good when everyone starts on the same um, amount of points obviously zero, so... Um, you know, there's actually something has already happened, so it's it's a good time to recap and so on. So uh, it's going to be the away game against Juventus. I probably should have done one of these live before. Um, I haven't, so we're going to do it today. Now uh, we've won, I think, three times. <laughs> I think it's three. Right? Let me just go back here just before we do. Uh, Juventus away. Obviously, we lost in the cup uh, and we lost at home. However, we went to the Juventus Stadium and won one one nil in the debut season. Let's see where was it? Went away from home again and won one nil. And last season, believe it or not, uh, we lost one nil at home, uh, but we won one nil away. For can lightning genuinely to strike four times? I don't think it can, but uh, we'll see how we go. So um, as you can see, we're third in the league. We've played two games and won both of them. We'll get to that in a moment. You might have seen a few players as well, a few players' names you've never seen before. Uh, but that's because we're going to go over some of the transfers. Now, a few players I've let go. Um, these are the players who ended their contracts. Diego Lopez, he retired. Um, he just can't get in front of Donnarumma, unfortunately. Montalivo is now at Stade Bucharest, okay. Ricky Alvarez has gone back to South America and Flamingo. Uh, a few players who were never really going to make the team. Luca Antonelli went for free to Leon. Uh, he is now injured. He was never really good enough. I uh, sold Ramos for half a million pounds to Boca Juniors. Um, he's another one. He, he, I mean, for two and a half million pounds, he did well for what he was worth. Yeah, I mean, he got 18 goals that season in 2016-17. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. But last season, he got three. The season before that, he got two and only came in halfway through. But, you know, he, he is definitely on a downward spiral now. You know, he's, he's over that hump of... Um, of hitting your peak, so to speak, you know, he's only going to go down from this point. And I've also sold Piscina here to uh, Ascoli and Rodrigo Eli to Cagliari. I've been waiting to get this guy into the first team. He's 24 now. He's blatantly not going to hit his potential. So I just thought, cash in on him, even if it's just, you know, for a six figure sum. Uh, I've also sent my two most promising regens, Massa and Freeman, out on loan. Uh, Massa's gone to Vicenza and Freeman has gone to Parma, who are incidentally now back in Serie A. Yes, uh, they were. They must have gone straight back up from the Lega Pro C, um, division, I guess, Serie D, I thought it was called, or the fourth division. Um, and they've come straight back up, so fair play to Parma. Hopefully that will be replicated in real life, because that was a very sad story. Players were brought in then. Firstly, Diego Poyet. Now, if you watched my series before, you know this guy's a legend. I've talked about it before briefly. He and Callum Cook, a youngster from um, Middlesbrough, he currently plays for, he's on this game. He's not as good as he was on FM15. Uh, but he and Cook and Poyet um, performs one of the best midfield partnerships I've ever had on Football Manager. Him and Poyet, just one was a halfback, the other was either, I think, either, I think he was a regista. And they were just phenomenal. They just formed such a good partnership for so long as well uh, in my derby team. And uh, I just thought, I've got to bring him back. Six and a half million pounds from Torino. And he's not at all bad because he's only 23. He's a really good player for that price as well. Just, just forget, the, forget the whole nostalgia Poyet thing. He is still a great signing. Um, and obviously De Jong, who is the vice captain, is not getting any younger. He is now approaching his mid-30s, so I thought, right, we need to get a De Jong replacement, we've got Blind and we've got Poyet now, that is a really good combination, hopefully Blind can be the sort of Cook V2 type thing. And then we've got two youngsters here, uh, Gert, um, trying to think how this, Gert Janssen, I think I've said that one right, from um, PSV and then VVV Vendo, uh, I think I've said again, I've said that right, his potential is pretty decent um obviously he's nowhere near the finished article at the moment so i've sent him on loan also to Parma. they were the team who were most interested and also quentin Bo uh, quentin boysgaard who's a real player by the looks of things at toulouse um i i was going to do a loan back for both of these however they were not interested in going back to their parent clubs that's why i was able to buy them for so cheap so if we look at boysgaard's 
potential again. It's not absolutely incredible for the record, but he, he's decent. You know, it's it's not a bad player to have. He could certainly be a good squad player if all else fails. So um, yeah, they that's why I was able to pick them up for the combined fee of less than three million pounds. Uh, they were just unhappy and they wanted to go, and they were some of the best sort of not wonder kids per se, but young top talents who were available for a cut price. So I went for them. And lastly, the big one. Um, I mean, if you look at the transfer budget, for God's sake, I mean, uh, you saw how much I spent on the player there, and it hardly made a dent. So I knew I had to make one major, massive signing, and that is Mania. Not the most <laughs> amazing um, find ever. I kn- I'm fully aware that many of you already know of this guy. He's been in many, many uh, other FM YouTubers' series and teams. Uh, however, I think he's fantastic. I, re- I he's a very good player for thirty-seven million pounds. He went from Barcelona to Dortmund. hasn't really played and sort of stagnated a little bit. He hasn't been in- he's not injury prone. So um, I just needed someone to come in and be like, right, here's this genuine quality up up front. You know, we've got now uh, Benteke Mania Backer. I mean, clearly Backer as well. He's thirty-two years old. He's also not getting any old uh, any younger. Menes is 31 you know we're going to need a young uh, top quality striker I mean Benteke is fine he's only 27 he is unfortunately out of today's game Niang is not really kicking on so I'll probably make another Mania type of signing next year as well so that'll um, help in the development of the two players but also as Baka and um, uh, Menez sort of come to the twilight years of their career we'll see a sort of passing of the torch so to speak to from Baka and Menez to say Mania and whoever else whoever else I sign um, and that's pretty much it so um, so obviously I've got to put in a goalkeeper now this is my 18 year old backup he's not bad to be fair I mean of course he's no Donnarumma uh, but he's 18 years old and Endozomo I think is how you say it um, and yeah that's that's it I bought in Billy Allen Old Sheik so I signed this guy a few years ago um, he's another one who appears to be a major wonder kid um, that's been highlighted by a few FM YouTubers, although I've not seen him in too many series. I've, 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 although, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't watched too many myself. Uh, so he may very well have appeared in a couple of other people's teams. But I would recommend this guy. He's very good. I've given the number, uh, number 11 shirt, and we'll see how he gets on. I've only signed him for a million pounds from... Um, oh, sorry, I got him off free. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Completely looking in the wrong place there. From, um, from Benfica. I think he was just unhappy. I don't know why. Um... And also, last piece of housekeeping uh, that I've got to do, Jose Mari uh, has been phenomenal, as you all know. However, he really took it to the next tight in the World Cup. He had a really good World Cup, and so did Davide Calabria. Um, incidentally, I'll just show you this now. Uh, the World Cup here was, in fact, won. I've forgotten. <laughs> I've completely forgotten who it was won by. Ah, France. Yes, 2-1 against Spain. Uh, Karim Benzema scoring the winner. Imagine this. Diego Costa missing a penalty in the 90th minute after Isco had given them a glimmer of hope after Zuma and Pogba went off injured. Wow, imagine if that happened in real life. I just can't. Oh, in fact, I want to, can we click on this? I want to see it. Oh, look at that. 89th minute. Oh, Diego Costa couldn't happen to a nicer guy, could it? Oh, goodness me. I mean, how, does, how badly does he get it wrong? Oh, it's a great save by Loris as well. And then, who's that, Sergio Busquets has it wide. Oh, my goodness. Right, we'll just have a quick look. I know a few for you guys like this. Uruguay and Ukraine. What is it with Ukraine? I don't understand. Imagine if Ukraine had won in Russia in 2018. That would be absolutely hilarious. Well, it wouldn't actually probably start World War Three, But um, this is, yeah, this is just having a click around here. Um, Uruguay beat Germany 4-0. Okay. Um, and Belgium knocked Argentina out on penalties. Spain beat Russia, as you'd expect. England nowhere to be seen, instantly, if you are. How did they get on? Oh, they got. <laughs> on goal difference. Who is the England manager now? It's Ronald Koeman, someone who I very much would like to see as England manager, actually, for the record. Uh, we'll see also the awards and things. So, best player went to Griezmann. Not exactly unreasonable. Uh, Isco in second, and then Lanzini in third. That's interesting. Goalkeeper goes to Rudy. I no, can't say I've ever heard of. Hmm. Young player goes to Bentecourt, but I did see that uh, Calabria was in the running for this brief. Excuse me, excuse me briefly. Here's your um, team of the tournament. You've got really in goal, lots of Mendes in there, Ramos. Um, and up front, you've got Zulia, who plays for Fulham. 
and Kravitz are the two Ukrainians. That's absolutely bizarre. Yeah, look at that. Obviously, you've got Kingsley Coleman, who's sort of the next big, like, major, major wonder kid, as far as I can see, anyway. Um, that's a very strange looking team, I've got to say. I would not expect some of them in there. So, Stephen DeFore scoring the goal of the tournament. Uh, come on, we'll show you that then. Go on. Since you so kindly asked. It was against Spain as well. No, they did not have a good, good tournament. Look at that, Carvajal with four assists in this game here. Funnily enough, it was the, it was a consolation. But it was a pretty good goal. <laughs> He's cut across it as well. One of the hardest things to do in football, in my opinion. So the golden boot goes to Zazulia. He got five goals and six. Kravitz came second. Wow, no wonder. And then there's Griezmann. That is peculiar. So he plays for Fulham. Wow, look at that. He obviously plays for Dnipro in real life, I think, anyway, as of December 2015. But anyway, we're getting a little bit sidetracked. So Calabria and uh, Mari also had very good tournaments, as I say, so that's helped their, um, their reputation and progress even further. So we're not going to be playing them today. This is the team we're going to be playing against Juventus. Uh, we've got your normal back four. I have made a promise to Jason Murillo here that I will give him more first-team football, as well as Bonaventura, so that's why he's playing. Um... But obviously, I've decided not to play Murillo today. Play Mangal and Stones. Hopefully, he won't get pissy after just one game. Because if it if he does, then that's just ridiculous. Um, Blind at defensive midfield. Um, because let me just see, there was a reason. De Jong. It was either De Jong or Mari, and I decided. I, I think I'm oh, a Poyet's at ninety percent. Um, so I'm not going to be playing Poyet today. He's not in. 100% condition, so I decided not to go for it. I know Blind's 95, but that's better than 90. Uh, Calabria on the right here is just, as I say, come on, leaps and bounds, and he's fantastic. If Blazikowski is not available, which he isn't, um, he's injured for two weeks. So Calabria slots right in there. Fantastic. Very similar type player now. Bonaventure in the middle, as promised. Then we come to Pastore out on the left. Now, I'm debating whether to play Emanuelson. I've given him a new contract, which is a bit stupid really, but he's handy to have. His wages are tiny and I just thought, sod it. And we're going to play Menez, who is in really good form. As you can see, he's got three and three. And we're going to play Munir as well. Both play one as a track, Batista, one as a complete forward. Um, I'm just trying to, yeah, they play it. That's fine. Uh, we've got Backer on the bench. If he, I mean, he's kind of fallen away. We've got Niang as well. Um, uh, what else have we got? And it's Billy Al Old Sheik is well. He was currently injured. That's why he's not on the bench. He was injured, and he's just come back to fitness now. It's been a, a uh, international break, so decides to put give him fitness in the reserves. So that's why his condition is a bit all over the place. And I think that's it now. Pastore, I'm going to take a gamble on. I might have to take him off a half time or sixty minutes in, uh, because for Manuelson because that condition is not great. Although he shouldn't be injured, he's just a little bit tired for whatever reason. Fingers crossed, here we go. So apologies for the slightly long <laughs> intro there, but uh, it's a recap, it's a new season and everything. Juventus to scrape at 1-0, wouldn't that be ironic? Uh, they haven't made any particular signings. Benucci's there, but I don't think that's a new signing. Um, yeah, it's the main three, as they expect. You've got Campos, Teixeira, Al Alca... I can never say this guy's name. Alcacer, probably got that one wrong. Uh, but that's... The same as it was last last year. They probably haven't had to make too many changes, considering how close they got. But we just picked them to the post. The tactic and everything is virtually the same um, from last season. So hopefully, with a new start and everything, uh, it should flow well. Now I forgot to go over the other two games. We did. We opened up against. Uh, I've actually forgotten who we opened up against. Now I think it was Udinese, and we won two one. And then we just played Fiorentina. And 1-2-0 uh, there, Mania got two assists on his debut. He didn't score, but as you can see, Menez um, on fire already. Three goals in three games. And here is Mania, and he goes close. Not the worst start in the world. P difficult angle. Oh, and it's got bounced through for Jeremy Menez. He can't quite control it. The ball was behind him. How many times have we seen that in real life? You know, where the ball, like a player, unexpectedly gets the ball. And he's sort of like, he's, he's, he's almost... Doesn't know, he's in disbelief, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't quite control the ball properly because he's not expecting it, and then it all goes to shit. And it's, yeah, that's I think exactly what happened there with Menez. Fair play to the football manager there for replicating that wonderfully, even in the 2D match engine here. That looks, that came across so well. Right, 
Ferguson again. Here's Salvio. Eduardo Salvio, very good player, of course. Abate gets it away, but it's going to come straight back. And Ocampos hits it wide. So Juventus now, as you would expect, I probably should be a little bit more defensive uh, than actually... Yeah, I think that's done. What am I doing? Um, I'm going to retain possession. I'm going to turn off just because we don't have as many flair players as we used to. Obviously, Blazikowski, Old Sheik, and so on are not on. They're the two main ones. Obviously, I've still got Mane, who can and Pastore. And so on. There's plenty there, but not the main ones. Chance for Menez. Oh, he's in such good form. You'd absolutely put your mortgage on him to score that. And he hasn't. Oh. Incidentally, if you are watching this, and a happy new year to you. <laughs> Hopefully, you should have a good 2016 on this channel, and I'm sure you will too. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out there, as uh, this should be should be the first video uploaded uh, in 2016. So, um, the Juventus not actually having a shot on target. Yet, incidentally, playing a bit like us at the end of last season, where we just couldn't score at the save ball. Just get a shot on target, never mind score in that regard. Stones with a good header away. Would I take a nil-nil here, I guess, if you're asking? Um, yes, I definitely would. And Pastore, oh my god, he's still got it, Salvio. I thought that was going to be a penalty, the way he missed the ball there completely. I think that should be half-time, yeah. Um, well, Menez, as you can see, 6.5. Mania not really in the game. He's had that one chance. Mangala with a 6.4. So not a lot really happening. I'm tempted to take Pastore off. Now, the only problem is the reason why I went with Pastore was because he is just better, even at 85% than Erby Emanuelson. But... I'm just thinking, he still owes me a really good performance, Emmanuel Sonny. It's been a while since he's given one. I think he's, he's certainly due one. Let's see how he gets on here. Pastore is in no real condition to play a full 90 minutes. Um, so I thought I'd just give him 45 here, see how he gets on. Um, he's not really set the world alight, so we'll see here. What I might actually try to do now, this might be a slight gamble, is maybe... If it really doesn't start working, we'll take off exploit the left flank. Now, like, that is a gamble, and it does leave us a little bit lopsided, and it's probably tactically... I'll probably come across as completely tactically inept, and Salvio's come off injured. That's Oh, no, he's not, sorry. He's just um, partially injured. Um, that might come across a bit tactically inept, but it's sort of... You know, Emmanuelson's there. He's not the player he once was. You know, he's a bit older. Um, can we afford to rely on him when getting forward? So, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't have brought him on if I didn't think he could do it but you know oh hang on that was okay it's been cleared that was good but uh, sort of making him the focus and now Mania's getting injured you know but making Emmanuelson the focus when we're trying to drive for goals and stuff that would make maybe it might not work but it, not, not particularly having the moment and it's a chance for half injured Mania and he put it wide it was a difficult ish chance but the finishing today hasn't been particularly great has it from both teams there's Marquisio Malcolm, who is very good actually on this. A lot of in half injured players at the moment. Now, I don't really want to... He's not done too badly, and his condition isn't the worst. I might just leave it a little bit longer. I don't want to aggravate that anymore, that injury on Mania, but is it worth maybe then maybe bringing back it on for him, especially after that miss? Right, Pereira, look at the space he's parting on the Red Sea. Goodness me, where did that come from? Okay, we're gonna, okay, here's a chance for Emmanuelson to whip the ball in. Manier. Uh, it's a good tackle by Marquisio. Here's Manier again. It's just not working at the moment. And Man Okay, I'm going to take him off. Um, just partially for safety, but also because he's not doing a lot. But mainly because he is... Um, I'll swap him to the Trek Autista. He's not having the impact I thought he would have. Um, but we'll give Backer 20 minutes. You know, he's still perfectly capable, Carlos Backer. Here's a chance for you, Bay. Pogba! My God, so he smashed that, absolutely leathered it. Right, chance again for Juve, but Stones, oh, he's got a control. I had a lot of time, and he just bumps it straight back to Chiellini. And a good save by Donnarumma, who is just getting better and better as the game goes on. Chance here, Bonaventura's corner. It's a poor corner, like watching Liverpool, that corner. And, oh my god, Salvio has all the time and space in the world, but he's messed that pass up. Alexandro has recovered it, though. Oh boy, this is going to get tight now with Malcolm. Oh, they're just not... 
We're giving them lots of room and time and space, but they're not really making the most of it. Oh, Campos can it's a good save by Donnarumma. I think we okay, we really do need to tighten up now. Um let's put this in. No, I don't want to use the upside trap. I will go back to flexible. I will go to defensive just for the last 10 minutes because they really are starting to turn the screw now. Um I said before, you know, we'll take a a, a nil-nil here against Juve. But they are really beginning to turn the screw now. Just hope that they don't dive in and per Oh, it's de deflected in. Fucking Pereira, well he's come on, he looked good, and of course I changed the friggin' tactics. And, um... Oh, that's so bloody typical. So it could, yeah, it looks like the pundit was right with that 1-0 at the minute. Oh, that is a pain in the arse. And Emmanuel, it was a gamble with Emmanuel, and it really didn't work, did it? Well, that's my fault. Here's the Siglio. Manuel some chip back post Calabria. How's he missed that? Ah oh dear. Right. I think we have one more change left, so we're gonna take off Mangala for Niang. No three up top. We are gonna go three at the back end, three up top. Uh, Bonaventura will attack Emmanuelson to support here. Said support. There we go. Um, I guess Niang suited as a. Uh, complete forward so we'll go back to fluid as well higher tempo we won't go to overload just yet okay now we are going to go to overload because there's just no highlights <laughs> which is always good right come on Come on, game, show me something, just anything. Nope, it's going to go all the way through. What a surprise. What an absolutely, what a, such an obvious surprise that was. It goes all the way through. There's 20 seconds to go, and it'll just show you the, the uh, token highlight at the end as it does. Well, that is hugely disappointing. We can't, oh, it's 2-0. Well, that's massively disappointing. And it was a good game up until that late goal as well. And then 2 nils very harsh. But we had chances without really threatening, to be honest. And that is massively disappointing. No one played particularly. I mean, Mangala's a 6.2 point, well, point in the end. I just have a few words there. But that is hugely disappointing. But as you can see, 10 minutes to go. We we're holding out. And now Maniz, oh, that's four to five days. It's not the end of the world. Um, I mean, that's hard to take because, you know, we played, for the most part, we played quite well there, I thought. You know, it's just a little bit of luck, deflected goal, and obviously just the, you know, we just went for it at the end there. How many times has that happened when you've um, gone for the guns to get the equaliser and then they've gone up the other end and scored there, or in this case from a set piece? Um, so this is our Champions League group anyway, incidentally. Uh, Real Madrid, Dynamo Kiev, and yes, that does say Swansea. They won the Europa League. <laughs> if Yeah, seriously, um, they won the Europa League. So they've gone into the Champions League. Le Petit I think is how you say that name, or Le Petit, yeah, or Le Petit Goal. I'm not, I don't know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not for sure on certain foreign pronunciations. I probably should do what Benji does and use Google Translate, but that's his thing, so I'm not going to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think we should qualify from that. Obviously, Real Madrid will top it. I think they are actually. Oh no, sorry, Marseille. The winners. They did get to the final though in our stadium. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that, that'll be interesting. We'll probably do that one live. I'll probably get my ass kicked, but there you go. So a hugely disappointing game there. Um, felt that we could have, we should have got a win. Uh, sorry, a draw at least. Certainly could have won it. Um, finishing wasn't really good enough, and at the top there, Mania, what got injured in the second half, but really let us down there. Well, it's still not the end of the world. Um, very much open at the top here very much still lot, lot, lots left to play for we'll see how we get on and of course the fans are very discontent at the, that result how dare you lose <laughs> very discontented right anyway um i'll be back with a new episode uh, probably tomorrow so thanks for watching i'll see you then goodbye